All right, everyone, welcome to the Atlas Industries layer here. I'm going to go through the different types of ECUs used on the 4200 as well as some of the other smaller variants. So uh, this question gets asked a lot. Calvin's already done a great video on this, but because it seems to come up so often um, as, a, as an admin, people proving posts that I figured I would do a, another video because more information out there just helps. So there are three basic year ranges of the 4200 as far as electronics were concerned. So there was the early P10 ECU that was used from 2002 to 2005. This is a P10, 02 to 05. Now, this is considered a 7X crank trigger. So what that means, I will show you a picture right here. That means there are eight slots minus one on the crankshaft that the engine looks at for crankshaft position. Now, we move on to the P12 ECU. Now, technically, there's two P12. There's a P12 and a P12A. That's the difference between 06 and 07. They are not directly compatible, but if you are doing an engine swap into something that won't have a BCM or the CAN network, they are effectively interchangeable. So this is P12 or P12A. The only difference with A is it has more internal memory, so GM was able to put more code in there, pretty much just for emissions and other things. So this is also a 7X crank engine. Now, why is this important? If you're doing an engine swap, these two effectively, the P10 and the P12, will run any engine from 02 to 05, as well as from 06 to 07. So if you just acquired an engine anywhere from the 02 to 07 range, you don't have a harness, you don't have an ECU, you can pick any of these to run. Now, the creme de la creme, as I like to say, is the E67 ECU. And you might be familiar with the E67 from use in the LS world, and that's exactly what this is. Now, this is a 58X crank trigger, and I'll show a picture of that crankshaft here. Now, this code cannot be changed in the ECU. People have tried even in the LS world with buco bucks, and it's not possible. So, you cannot run an E67 ECU on a 7x engine and vice versa so unfortunately these are not interchangeable now why do i say unfortunately well the e67 currently and i'll get back to that is the bomb so the e67 was used on the ls9 the lsa some gm performance parts connect and cruise computers so this is fully set up ready to go you can run three bar of boost on this this already has boost tables in it you don't need to modify anything to run boost on these. So that's why these are really awesome. But again, traditionally, you'd need an engine. Now, Calvin sells an awesome kit, which is available at uh, PAC, P-A-C-C -C Performance. It's just about to come out. That is going to be a crank trigger kit that's going to be allow you to put a 58X trigger on any of the earlier engines. So that's, uh, that's going to be a cool little feature there that you'll be able to run. Now, one feature of the P-12 that you can run boost on is that it uses a mass airflow sensor and a map sensor just like the E67. The tables run out of boost in the P12. They don't go over 100 kPa, but once you get over 108 kPa, you can program it for the MAF to take over and you can read as much air as you want coming into the engine. So that is capable of boost. Now, traditionally, the P10 has not been capable of boost, and why do I say that? Well, this ECU, along with the P11, uh, which was used in some of that early Ecotech stuff, GM, for some silly reason, decided to do Alpha N fueling. Well, what is Alpha N fueling? Well, traditionally, in an ECU, you have MAF, MAP, which would be considered speed density, or Alpha N. Now, these ECUs and most other modern ECUs use map and math and a blend of it and it calculates everything inside you don't need to worry about that 
But regardless to say, you have sensors that look at the actual airflow going into the engine. Now, the cheap and easy, which GM sometimes just seems to take that shortcut, maybe more often than they should, happens to be on the P10. So what's alpha N? Well, for traditional engine, if let's say you have your map sensor right here, and you have boost coming in. Now, fueling and spark timing is calculated. You have map, okay, plus RPM. And obviously it's way more complicated than this, but it doesn't mean, you don't need to know that. ECU takes care of it. And that equals your fueling, okay? So RPM, that's going to be constant in the equation. Map, that can change based off of boost coming into the engine. But if you increase boost to the engine, that's a part of the fuel equation, you will get more fuel. Now, so that's speed density. Now, alpha N, these ECUs, how do they calculate fuel? They calculate based on RPM and throttle position, okay? So you'll notice on a P10 Trailblazer, you have a map sensor and you'll go, well, why can't I just shove boost in here? Well, in the stock configuration, how GM has it configured, this is all that calculates fuel. There's no map reference in here. The only thing GM uses the map sensor for are some idle tables that stop at 1600 RPM and also to adjust fueling when you first turn the key on based on if you're in Louisiana where there's high air density or you're in Colorado where there's low air density so the ECU can set up its baseline. So if you had a bunch of boost, there's no calculation in here that's going to change that. Now, I am working on some changes to CCU and some people are testing the code right now that changes these fueling tables to map. So you would be able to run up to about two bar of speed density on the CCU, but it's not ready yet. So for all intents and purposes right now, if you're planning on boosting a 4200 with the stock ECU, which I highly recommend over aftermarket system, unless you're going crazy numbers, but that's a whole nother conversation. I would recommend E67 or AP12. So there are a couple other differences, things you should look out for on a 4200 or some of the other engines is this is called a T42. So this is the transmission controller. Now the early engines, you'd have what you considered a PCM, so powertrain control module. So they would take care of the transmission shifting themselves. Everything was in the computer. Later on when you got, the ECU got way more complicated and the E67 was used in GM's lineup with manuals with four speed automatics. It was even used with, uh, with some of the Ecotec four cylinders all the way up to the eight cylinders. There's so many different variables that the E67 just controls the engine. It does interface with the transmission, but it interfaces with, in the case of the Trailblazer, the T42 module. Now there are places like True Boom Motorsports who have a really cool way of modifying this setup so that you can run a six speed. Uh, Jonathan Whitaker at JWIT YouTube channel is doing that to his Trailblazer right now. So if you wanna go over there and check that out, he will show you in his build of how he's doing that. But for all intents and purposes, a stock Trailblazer PCM or ECM will only control a four speed automatic. So 4L60, 4L80, or a manual transmission, you can set it to manual transmission and run a uh, hydraulically controlled, so 700R4, 204R, uh, Turbo 400, what have you. Um, if you're not familiar how to program these ECUs, I have my bench set up here for programming them off of the vehicle, but you can get uh, different HP tuners modules, which are a great investment. Um, don't let anyone scare you if you're not a f uh, familiar with how to program these. I'm going to go through and do a programming tutorial as well as building a wire harness. If you don't want to build one yourself, I'd highly suggest going over to lime-swap.com. Jeremy over there, he didn't even know that I'm going to mention him in this video, but he's just a good guy. He's one of the OG 4200 guys and he makes harnesses and tunes for these engines. So if you don't want to deal with it yourself, I'd highly recommend going to him. He sold tons of them. They just work. 
Um, so that's a good option for you. But I will be doing some tutorial videos on how to do them yourself if you are feeling crafty. Um, if you want to get someone local to do it, don't let anyone fool you into thinking, oh, it's not an LS platform. I don't know what to do. When you look at the actual uh, menus and everything in the computer with HP tuners, they look almost all the same. If someone can't figure out how to tune an E67 for the six cylinder, or they don't want to, or they're scared, you don't want to go to them because they're almost identical. Any good tuner should be able to do with that. Now, last but not least, there are a lot of people who maybe aren't familiar with modern computer systems. Now, this is a ECU from a 1988 GMC Sonoma with a Iron Duke. Now you notice here, this has a chip. I see all the time people saying, well, I'll just chip it. I'll just chip. Well, that's not really a thing anymore. So I just wanted to get that kind of myth out there. This is an actual chip. Okay, You can pull these out. You program the chip. I have these because I have an old S10 that I road race and, and goof around with stuff on that. Um, that's not a part of my Atlas business at all. It's just something fun that I do on the side. But these are actual chips. Okay, So modern ECUs do not have removable chips like that. It's all flash memory. It all gets programmed by HP tuners through a USB port on your computer. So just wanted to make sure to get that out of the way. If there's any confusion, you don't chip a 4200 ECU or any Atlas ECU for that matter. So I hope that was informative. Um, obviously, take a look at these ECUs. You cannot interchange them except for the ones that I mentioned. You cannot swap harnesses. Obviously, these connectors would not fit this connector, so the harness always has to match, or you're not going to be able to get it to plug in. The salami lid ain't going to fit, won't fit. So the salami lid won't fit the salami lid. lid. Um, I offer harnesses that are used on the website as well as computers. So if you wanted to buy one and have those sent to Jeremy, uh, to have it set up, or if you wanted to do it yourself, that's an option as well. So I hope that was informative. Keep a lookout for some of the other more in-depth videos I'm going to do on how to set up these ECUs, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.